Welcome to the second uh, tutorial on dynamic system modeling and control. Um, this tutorial focuses on two things. Number one, what is a system? And number two, what makes a system dynamic? I am Hossam Fathi and I'm uh, glad to be going through this tutorial with you. Um, the goals of this tutorial are um, number one, to define the term system, and number two, to define what makes a system dynamic. Uh, in particular, one of the most important things we're going to be going over in this tutorial is to highlight the defining role of memory in dynamic systems. So with that in mind, let's go to the first question. What is a system? So uh, this question is very difficult to answer because uh, the word system is ubiquitous in the English language. And uh, there are many, many examples of uh, the use of this word in everyday discussions as well as in engineering discussions. We talk about cruise control systems. We talk about autopilot systems. We talk about taxation systems and cardiopulmonary systems. We talk about economic systems and communication systems. We talk about systems of governance and healthcare systems. Uh, we talk about systems that students prefer not to think about, and we talk about systems that uh, practically nobody likes to think about. And uh, we even go as far as talking about um, uh, complex systems, and I'm putting that in quotation marks to sort of raise the question of what does that really mean, and we talk about systems of systems, and uh, the question is what does that mean. Um, and so given this very widespread use of a term system um, the question is can we come up with a definition of this term or is it impossible to define the word system because it's used in so many different contexts to mean so many different things um, I'm not gonna attempt to define the term system from a linguistic perspective here um, what I am going to try to do instead is to try to intuitively um, come up with an understanding of what the expression system usually means and entails and I'm not gonna claim that that is a rigid rigorous linguistic definition so if we think about you know the typical everyday use of the word system especially in engineering discussions and uh, if we think about what we mean usually when we talk about the word system most of the time we're talking about a collection of components it's very unusual to talk about a system that contains only one component okay so that's first of all the second thing is that usually we think about these components as not just sitting in isolation and functioning separately from one another we think about them as interacting with one another we think about them as working together to achieve a goal so we think about these components as having non-trivial interactions one of the very important things to keep in mind when you think about these non-trivial interactions is that these non-trivial interactions do not have to be synergistic. The term synergy refers to a situation where the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts. It refers to a positive situation. It, it, it refers to a positive thing. Okay, Systems are, are not always synergistic, and the interactions between the components of a system are not always positive interactions. Uh, you can certainly think of examples where the interactions between the components of a system are non-trivial, but they're destructive as opposed to constructive. They're negative as opposed to positive, in which case you would hesitate naturally to use the expression synergy. So the interactions between the components in a system are, are, are sorry, non-trivial, but they're not necessarily synergistic. The third element of the definition of a system is that the components of a system usually interact not just with one another, but also with everything outside the system, which we call the environment. But this interaction with the environment happens in a very well-defined manner, okay? If uh, those of you who've taken ther classes in thermodynamics are familiar with the concept of uh, the word system from thermodynamics, usually when you talk about a thermodynamic system and you talk about it conceptually, you pull out a piece of paper and you draw something that looks like a potato or a cloud. And you say, okay, everything inside this potato or cloud is the system and everything outside of it is the environment. What you're really saying is that systems usually have very well-defined boundaries separating them from the environment. So the third element of the definition of the system is that the system, yes, does interact with its environment, but only through a very well-defined boundary. There are two kinds of interactions that the system can have with the environment. 
the environment can dictate certain inputs to the system. And in control theory and in dynamic systems theory, we typically denote these inputs by u of t, where u can be a vector, and hence the fact that it's bold face in this slide. And then the system can exert certain influences on its environment. We represent these impact of the system on its environment by the term output. We say that these are the system's outputs to its environment. And in control theory and dynamic systems theory, we typically use the symbol y of t, boldface y, to refer to outputs. Th these are not universal symbols, but they're very common. Um, so intuitively, a system is a collection of components that interact with one another in a non-trivial manner and have a well-defined boundary separating them from their environment. Now, the nice thing about this intuitive definition is that while we may disagree on it and we may uh, have interesting discussions about it, okay, um, the fact is that from a mathematical perspective, you look at the picture that I've just drawn and you recognize that mathematically all what a system is is a mapping from time-dependent inputs, u of t, to time-dependent outputs, y of t. So from a mathematical perspective, the definition of a system that we're going to adopt is that it's a mapping from inputs to outputs that are both functions of time. This is often referred to in the dynamic systems community as the causal definition of a system because it, it, it's grounded in the principle of causality or cause and effect. The inputs are causes and the outputs are effects. Now, you can come up with a causal or non-causal definitions of what constitutes a system, and it's a topic that we may brush up, uh, we may discuss or brush uh, brush on later in in in, in this uh, set of tutorials. But for now, I want to stick with the causal definition of a system and see how far we can push it. So. A system from a mathematical perspective, from a causal perspective, is a mapping between inputs and outputs. So now that we've defined a system, the next question is what makes a system dynamic? And what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to take some of the things that you immediately think about when you hear the word dynamic and question them. Typically, when somebody is told that a system is dynamic and a system is a mapping from inputs to outputs, Intu intuitively they ask themselves well what does that mean does it mean that the inputs change with time does it mean that the outputs change with time is that how I define a dynamic system that's a very interesting question and it turns out that while it's okay if you say that a system is dynamic if its inputs and outputs change with time if that's your definition that's your choice that's fine it turns out that the consensus of the dynamic systems community is that we do not find that to be a satisfactory definition. For some reason that I will explain shortly, the idea that a system is dynamic if its inputs change with time or if its outputs change with time is just not appealing to the dynamic systems community. To see why, I'm going to throw a very simple example at you. Let's think about a currency exchange system. The input to this system is a certain amount of money in a certain currency, let's say dollars, and the output of the system is a you know an amount of money in a different currency let's say british pounds for the sake of discussion so you go to the bank you go to the currency exchange system and you have a hundred dollars and you want to exchange them for british pounds and suppose that the exchange rate is um, s basically that one hundred dollars equals seventy british pounds so point seven pounds per dollar so you give the bank or the currency exchange system a hundred dollars and you get back seventy pounds Suppose you go to the same currency exchange system the next day and suppose that for whatever reason the exchange rate is fixed and it's always 0.7 pounds to the dollar. You give the bank $200 now and what you get back is 140 pounds. The next day you give the bank $300 and you get 210 pounds. And what's interesting in this example is that the inputs of this system are changing as a function of time the outputs are changing as a function of time. But the question I have for you is, is the system truly dynamic? And remember, the system is a relationship between inputs and outputs. In this case, as you can see, the system itself is static. Even though its inputs and outputs are changing as a function of time, the system is static and it's not changing with time. So even though one's intuition usually when you think about the word dynamics, just think about physical quantities, inputs and outputs that are changing with time. 
that's just not satisfactory to us as we're discussing dynamic systems and system dynamics. That just doesn't seem to be a very appealing definition. So how do we define a dynamic system as a dynamic systems community? What have we converged to as a, as a community in terms of a definition? Well, let me throw a different example at you. I'm going to look at a cat, a house cat. And I'm going to take this house cat um, and on some day, let's say tomorrow, I'm going to sing a food song to the cat. I'm going to make up a song that tells the cat that it's being served food. And I'm going to serve this cat a bowl of food. Now, the cat's initial reaction, if uh, it has not been trained uh, to understand the food song, will probably be to not know what the food song is all about. But, of course, the cat understands food. The next day, I'm going to sing the same food song and give the cat a bowl of food. Cats are very intelligent animals, and it won't take very long for the cat to acquire the Pavlovian reaction that when you sing this food song to the cat, the cat begins to get very excited and to understand and recognize that there will be a bowl of food and perhaps even run to the place where the bowl of food is usually served. Okay, So what has happened in this situation? What's really interesting in this situation is that the inputs to the cat, the food song and the food bowl, have not changed with time. But the cat's behavior in response to these inputs has changed with time. The cat has learned. And what's really interesting, if you ask experts on learning, what is the single most critical thing you need to have in order to be able to learn from the past, they will tell you, that it is memory, the ability to remember, and the ability to act based on memory. In this case, the cat has changed. The cat has learned. The cat is a dynamic system. The cat has memory. And so this leads us to the consensus of the dynamic systems community is that we label a system as dynamic if and only if it has memory. Okay. So with this in mind, we can now begin to classify systems. We can say that a system is static if it doesn't have memory, meaning that its output now is a function of its input now and only now. We can say that a system is dynamic or causal, meaning it obey, uh, obeys the law of cause and effect, if the output now is a function of the input both now and in the past. Okay, The, the importance of the past here is that if the output now is dependent on the input in the past, then the system has memory. The term causal here, you know, refers to the idea of cause and effect. That the output now, which is an effect, is a consequence of a cause that happens both now and in the past. Cause has to precede effect. Now, as a special case of dynamic systems, we say that a system is strictly causal if its output now is only a function of past input. And that's a special case of causal or dynamic systems. Finally, we can say that a system is clairvoyant if its output now is a function of future input. In this case, the idea that cause has to precede effect vanishes and the system is not causal anymore. Um, and so those are basically our categories of systems in terms of static, dynamic, and clairvoyant. Now, in a course, in an introductory course or an introductory set of tutorials on dynamic system modeling, the focus is usually on dynamic systems, whether they're just causal or they're strictly causal. Uh, static systems are an interesting subset of that, an interesting special case, uh, a system that is um, that whose output now depends just on the input now is a static system, which is, you can think of it as a special case of a dynamic system where there are no dynamics. Uh, clairvoyant systems are interesting, and they're certainly very fascinating to study. There are some very interesting examples in the scientific literature of systems whose dynamic behavior marches backwards in time. So they're dynamic, but you have to take the time axis and flip it. Uh, if you don't flip the time axis, they're clairvoyant. There are certainly very interesting examples of that. But in an introductory set of tutorials on dynamic system modeling, the idea of clairvoyance is, tends to be a bit marginal. So we're not going to talk much about clairvoyant systems. So the focus in these tutorials is going to be on dynamic or causal systems. And the most important thing um, for you to remember is that in order for a system to be dynamic, it has to have memory. This concludes the second tutorial. 
The next tutorial is going to go into the very interesting question of how do we model a dynamic system and specifically how do we model its memory? How do we represent the memory effects in a dynamic system? With that in mind, thank you very much for uh, watching and going through this tutorial and I look forward to the next tutorial. Thank you.